According to Carl Jung, there are basically four stages in life. And only in two of these stages do we actually experience problems, the difficulties. The four stages are firstly our early childhood experiences, our early childhood life. Secondly, we have everything ranging from puberty to your mid 40s to 50s. Then we have the third stage, which goes from the 40s to 50s down to until you become a really elderly person. And the last stage, well, that's your elderly state. And according to Carl Jung, only in the middle two stages do we experience problems. We might experience different problems in these two stages, but these are the main stages in which we experience these problems. And we experience them for one simple reason, because we are conscious. Because when we're in an unconscious state, we don't really have that many problems. And by unconscious, I'm not meaning that you're laying on the floor, completely drunk, completely wasted, not realizing what the hell is going on around you. But before we get into all of this, what's going on powerful people? My name is Benjamin and I welcome you to today's video. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future videos. Also, if you're just diving into this video and this is your first video on Carl Jung, then you might wanna check out some of my previous videos on Carl Jung where I actually explain what the unconscious really is because we don't have the time to dive into this in that video right here. One more thing, a huge shout out to Eli Z, David Rose, Gary Minar, Aaron C and Kieran Broadley for supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate that. But without further ado, let's actually explain a little bit more in depth what we mean when we're saying only through consciousness do we really experience problems. In our early childhood, meaning the first stage, we don't really have problems. If you think back, then your childhood was probably pretty easy. Yes, you might have had a rough time, maybe not the best parents, but you didn't really experience all the struggles that you now have in adulthood. It's just a different story. And according to Carl Jung, this happens because in our childhood, we weren't really that aware. We weren't that conscious. We were more in the single-minded, unconscious state. If you actually take a modern psychological look on it, then you will also recognize that younger children always think that everyone around them thinks exactly the same way they do. We assume as little kids that people around us simply have the same perspective. And to us adults, this obviously doesn't seem like the best thing. We want to be able to see different perspectives. Yet, with these different perspectives come all of the problems. If you take one step further back and look, for example, at primitive tribes, or if you look even at animals, then you will also recognize they have more of this single-minded view where they don't allow that much from the outside. They don't really see all the other perspectives and they also don't have that many problems. An animal might experience, for example, the struggle of reaching a far-hanging fruit or something like that. But they don't experience these elaborate complex problems that we have in our modern lives. And these modern problems come into existence, come into our lives when we hit puberty or around that age. And when we firstly realize that our instincts might actually be conflicting, that we have different motives, that we see different perspectives, that we, for example, see, hey, yeah, it would probably be nice to eat this cake right now, but if I continuously eat it, I get fat. So we have these conflicting motives. This is just a very simple example, but this can span to even wider and complex topics, obviously. Now in the second stage that comes after our childhood, we experience all these problems that really deal with our biological needs. We wanna be a recognized part of our community. We wanna have a proper social standing. We wanna build an existence, have a decent income, maybe build a family, get some kids, build a house, and really do all of this fundamental stuff where you think, hey, that seems like the natural thing to do. That's basically our early adulthood up to ages 40 to 50. After 40 to 50, we again switch stages. And this is where a lot of people simply continue what they did previously. What they don't recognize, according to Carl Jung, is that there is a significant shift. And this shift should bring you back a little bit more in touch with your personal self. Because the more you move into this materialistic paradigm where you just want to achieve something, build a proper foundation, build a strong income, 
The more you go into that direction, the more you lose your personal characteristics and your individuality. And in the ages from 40 to 50 upwards, we should actually look more into getting back in touch with ourselves and maybe finding a higher purpose, a deeper meaning. And this is also the time where a lot of people start again to turn to a religion or something like that. Also, when we switch from our earlier adulthood to our later adulthood, we often either change our beliefs or we ingrain them really deeply, meaning we really become dogmatic about them. We really ingrain them so deeply that nobody can sway us from our path. The open-mindedness that we once had is completely gone because we just think, hey, yeah, I did this all my life. This is the right thing. And if someone tries to argue with us, then that's going to be very uncomfortable for them because we just ingrain these beliefs very strongly. In the last stage, in the elderly stage of our lives, we become a little bit more childish again. Not in a sense that we really become childish, but in a sense that we really become a little more unconscious. We're not as bothered by all of these problems anymore and we're beginning to face death. And besides the physical ailments that we might have, we don't actually have that many problems. It all seems a little bit more relaxed and childish. Now, there are two main sorts of problems that we experience in our lifetime. The first one we already slightly touched upon, it is becoming more conscious, seeing different perspectives, realizing that we ourselves have conflicting motives, that we have varying interests, that it's hard to align these things. On the one hand, we want to be successful. On the other hand, we just want to relax a little bit. On the one hand, we want to have a girlfriend. On the other hand, we're really shy and we don't want to talk to women. On the one hand, we want to really get healthy and fit. On the other hand, we enjoy computer games just a little bit, a tad bit too much. All of these conflicting motives really lead to a lot of problems that we experience. And the more aware and conscious you are, the more obnoxious these problems become. At a very base level, you probably don't think that much about the environment. But at some point, you might be facing a situation where you on the one hand want to save the environment, you want to do the right thing. On the other hand, buying the environmentally non-friendly product might be so much cheaper and better for your finances, which you really try to balance as well. And then there's the third alternative of a product that breaks your bank and that also breaks the environment, but it just looks so good and I think it might get you a lot of recognition. So you really have to face these situations and it becomes more complicated, especially in social endeavors this can be excruciatingly complicated because there are just so many aspects that play into social contexts, into social situations. Now, from what I've read, I didn't really get that Carl Jung actually proposed a proper solution to this problem. I think he was more on the side of, hey, if you really know about it and if you realize that this is a thing, then that will probably already help. But I want to have a more practical approach to this. And if you think about it, if being conscious about certain things creates problems for you, then you have a very simple solution and you will probably know it already. And if you don't know it just yet, you will feel like completely like, yeah, that is obvious after I told you. But before I tell you, why don't you hit that like button for me and maybe share the video with a friend cause I most definitely need the help. So what am I talking about? Simple habits, routines, things, that automate your life. Because if you have something on autopilot, you don't have to be conscious about it. You don't have to think about it. If you have the habit of going to the gym, that's simply a no brainer. It's not that you have an internal conflict anymore because you're just like on autopilot running there like, okay, I have to do this, I'm doing it, okay, it's done. It's not like you have to really get your ass up because it just automatically happens. If we try to make habits or routines out of our problems, then this might help us a lot. If you want to get a girlfriend or get to know a woman, make it a habit to talk to other people. If you want to eat healthier, make it a habit to only shop for healthy foods or to write a grocery shopping list. All of these things help you to automate the things and really push the problems that you have a little bit away. And by pushing them away, we're not trying to suppress them. We're trying to really automize them, make 
a routine out of them and the problem all of a sudden doesn't seem as daunting anymore. But okay, back to what Carl Jung said. And according to Carl Jung, there's a second major type of problems that we experience. And these are the problems that happen when we move from one stage to the next and to the next and to the next. Because in this transitioning period, we often feel the urge to take with us what we had before. If we go from the childish stage to our early adulthood, then we really just want to keep ourselves as we are. We maintain our childish egoism. We really still want to indulge in playing all the time. We really just want to eat the delicious foods and we really don't want to take that much responsibility. Yet you will quickly realize that not adapting to the new circumstance, to the new stage that you're in, is probably gonna yield pretty bad results. You really have to adapt. The old things that you were following simply don't serve you in the current stage. You need to always keep that in mind. And this is quite complicated. If you've watched my video on building habits, where I made the rubber band metaphor, then you will also know that your system, that your body, that your internal self always tries to get back to the state where it previously was. If you followed a certain lifestyle for 10 years and you try to break out of it, then it will be difficult because your body and your brain, they will always be like, no, come on, let's go back to the previous lifestyle. That obviously also worked. Why do we need to change stuff? And this change is painful, but it is necessary because if you don't adapt it, then you will face even more problems in the stage that you're in right now. Secondly, which we already mentioned as well, is that if you go from your early adulthood to your late adulthood, that you need to change things up. You can't just constantly strive for the social recognition, for building a family, for getting a better income, because that simply doesn't serve you in the later stages of your life. And lastly, if you just try to maintain the super high consciousness and this thinking capabilities that you had in your previous life, or if you just cling too heavily to pretty much anything, then your elderly stages will be quite miserable because you will realize that it is going downhill and you will realize that the logical thing of saying, okay, after death there's nothing, might actually not be the thing that you're looking forward to. So you need to adapt there as well. It's always a constant change and a constant adaption. What Carl Jung also said is that we have these major goals that we really want to achieve, but the goal shouldn't be to actually achieve them. The goal should be to constantly work on them because let's face it, a lot of goals we simply will never achieve and constantly working on these goals or simply working on us might be the best thing that we can do. If you want to work on yourself, then be sure to hit the subscribe button because I upload a lot of philosophy and self-improvement content that may help you in the future. Another huge shout out to Eli Z, David Rose, Gary Minar, Aaron C and Kieran Broadley for supporting me on Patreon. I most definitely appreciate it. I have two more videos for you right here that you should watch next if you haven't seen them already. I wish you a wonderful day and I will be seeing you in the very next video.